For the APTN Yellowknife Bureau, 2019 was a jam-packed year. In the winter, we followed up on an Auditor General's report which gave the territory's child welfare system a failing grade. Nine out of 10 kids in care did not have regular communication with their social worker. And when they were placed in a foster home, there was no background check. Catching up with northerners who've aged out of foster care and who are now fighting to keep their own kids. I wish I had known what, I w what my plan was. Like I'm used to being told what to do and what not to do, but I didn't have anyone to tell me. Also demanding justice are 60 scoop survivors. But until that happens, and a letter from Canada that says, you know, we're sorry we did this to you, you know, at that point, it's going to feel real. In the spring, the Yellowknife Sobering Center saw widespread attention for increased levels of violence. This person does not look like they're breathing on the ground. Okay, ambulance has been advised. They are on the way, okay? The facility is under the direction of the Territorial Department of Social Services. Nearby, residents were frustrated and said their concerns about safety of patrons fell on deaf ears. The proximity of the day shelter to the liquor store is encouraging a never-ending cycle of binge drinking, and we see it day in and day out. Continuing in the theme of health and wellness, APTN explored a petition in the South Slave for more aging in place options for remote communities. Residents down in Daninakwe, where an elders facility closed a decade ago, watched loved ones move away from family for care. If we cared for them in our community, they would not get lonesome. They would have more of their own traditional foods. They would have visitors, uh, personal care from their own caregivers. But Northerners are breaking cycles and taking health in their own hands. The Arctic Indigenous Wellness Foundation in Yellowknife has seen well over 2,000 people access their services since opening in April 2018. They began a hot breakfast program to accompany their counseling and traditional healing services for those in need. Here we, we treat people the way we want to be treated and we, we treat people the way that um, it, it um, makes them feel good that they're being given an opportunity to express themselves in a good way. In the summer, on the ground, and in the air, APTN checked out the large burn zones in Wood Buffalo National Park. We sat down with trappers who questioned if it was necessary for 45% of the park to have burned in the last decade. And that, you know, it's great to burn and it's good, it's necessary, but it's not necessary to burn large quantities of land. In the Satu, community gardens grow from planting that seed until eating that vegetable and how good it tasted like. Youth were also stewards of the land, learning about climate change. In August, APTN camped in the Beaufort Delta with Northern Youth for a climate change perspective series. We learned about concerns over loss of culture, traditional hunting grounds, and suggestions on how youth want to adapt. The fall saw all things politics. I, Kateri Lynn, hereby accept the office of chief... It was not your father's council, as the Yellow Knives Dene elected a younger and more female-centered council. If you were to go to any of the youth, a lot of them wouldn't have any idea what to tell you. I want to make sure that we have, like, at least monthly meetings with the youth, so we all just come together, we share our concerns, we say, like, what's going on with us, basically, what we want to see. It was a big year as our longest running premier, Bob McLeod, retired from office. An election fever hit. For the first time in the history of our nation, we are about to swear in an elected parliament that is gender balanced. Prior to this year, the NWT was the least gendered balanced in Canada. Now they lead the nation with the largest percentage of women in office. Uh, the challenges that we'll face as women is uh, 
and I, you know, I don't want to offend, but uh, women sometimes are expected to work twice as hard to prove themselves. So, but we're we're here. We know what we're getting into, and we are willing to put the work in. Premier Carolyn Cochran was voted in and is the only female premier in the country. <laughs> Leaving things on a good note this winter, we spent time with a new Inuit organization in the capital. You take out all the, the marks. Mm. APTN got to know the Inuit organization, who've created space for those who live far away from the remote communities. It's here we heard real stories from real people. Kwana Masi Cho, Kuyanami, for tuning in. Charlotte Mort Jacobs, APTN National News, Yellowknife.